Hello guys. Let us see. Django support in case of farms development. Django providing lot of support to develop a farm. Let us see what is the procedure and what kind of simplicity we will be getting while developing a farm. In the myviews.py, inside a myviews.py, we developed some definitions, some function definitions. In the same location, I will be developing a class which is for farm development purpose. A simple class I am developing. REG farm is a class which is a subclass to farm. This farm is available inside of farms from a Django import to farms. Farms dot farm. REG farm is a subclass to farm. Inside a REG farm, I am just developing two fields. You can go for any number of fields. But I am developing only two fields, first name and last name. REG form, which is a subclass to form, first name, last name. You can go for any number of fields. Let us see what these fields are. Character fields, both are character fields. In the same forms, in the same forms, not only form class, there is a character field class. I am choosing character field class. For the first character field, what is the label and maximum allowable length? What is the label maximum allowable length? For the second care field, not only label maximum length, I am also providing required as a false. By default required is a true. By default required is a true. If you don't want mandatory for a particular field, then explicitly mention required as a false. Explicitly try mentioning required as a could be false. By default, by default, every care field is a mandatory, required will be a true required will be a true. Now here I am mentioning first name as a required is equal to true that is default. Last name I explicitly mentioned like required is equal to false. Without filling last name you can submit a form but first name is mandatory. We didn't modify required is equal to true in case of first name. First name is a mandatory last name is optional so for both we are providing even label name also label name label or eg form now this form can be used while developing html file while developing html file try using this form how to use this form while developing HTML5. Let me develop Hello7. In the Hello7, I will be specifying what HTML template. So please observe, Hello7 is one simple definition. It, might, it can be called or it can be assigned to one URL in the URLs file because of it is taking a request hello 7 taking request like a hello 6 and hello 5 this is hello 7 inside a hello 7 create an object to reg form assigned to one variable we are assigning to a variable 
REG form containing first name and last name. REG form containing first name and last name. REG form object we are supplying in the context. I am choosing REG.html with a request while rendering. While rendering request object, HTML and one context object. Please observe. I am choosing a key as a form. Second one is REG form object. Now, this form can be used in the reg.html. This form is nothing but reg. That reg nothing but reg form object. In the reg form object, first name and last name is there. Now, inside a reg.html, I can use first name, last name. reg.html, it can use a form that is a reference to REG. REG is a REG form inside REG form first name and last name. Now try developing REG.html. Copy. Go to pages folder. We configured pages folder for all the templates. Right click on pages folder. Go to new. Select HTML file. REG.html. Inside REG.html, we can straight away use a form. Form is a member. Form is a member. You can see. Form is a member in the context. While specifying a form, we will be getting REG. While specifying a form, we will be getting REG. Inside REG, first name and last name both are specified. Let us see how it will be displaying. Let us give a call to Hello7. To call Hello7, we need assignment to one URL. Go to the URLs file. In the URLs file, I provided H7 for hello 7 to get a hello 7 we need to make a call to h7 from the app 1 from the app 1 let us start let us start server please observe <coughs> Python space manage.py run server. Now give a call to this. Okay. Let me copy this one. <clears throat> oh, hard. Let's open a browser. Instead of localhost, you can use localhost also. One two seven dot zero dot zero dot one colon a colon 8000 slash app1 slash h7 I just printed a form you can see we got a label as a first name then one character text field last name as a label one character text field Please observe application level URL is a app one, then service level URL is a H7. You can see application level URL is there. 
App one. Then service level URL H7. I made a call to Hello7. I opened a browser. I made a call like this. If you want it, you can use even local host also. Let me show. Local host to colon 8000 slash app1 slash h7. We simply printed a form in the reg.html. Open reg.html. This form we have printed. It is a part of the context. We already stored reg object through form. We simply printed a form. What is this form? Go to the my view. Hello 7. Form is assigned to reg. This form can be used in the reg.html. While using form in the reg.html, this reg will be printing. What is reg? Registration form. What is there in the registration form? First name and last name. What is there in the first name? Label is there and maximum length property is there. What is there in the last name? Required is equal to false then label. As of now we are seeing a label and text field. Care field is nothing but a text field. Automatically we are getting a first name and last name. Now go to reg.html. You can also mention dot as underscore b. Now every form input field will be displaying in the paragraph. First name, one form input field. Last name, another form input field. First name is one form input field. Last name is another form input field. You will be getting paragraphs. Just to refresh. This content is in one paragraph. This content is in another paragraph. If you want to see the original HTML, go to the right click, view page source. You can see one paragraph here, one paragraph here. Observe this point. One paragraph, one more paragraph. You can also go for as a table. Now every form control will be displaying as a table. Every form control will be displaying as a table. But one small thing is required. Table starting tag and ending tag we only has to provide. Try developing like this. Now form controls will be getting in the table style. Earlier form controls, form input fields, getting in the paragraph tab, paragraph tag, now in a table form. Let's go to down. There it is, yeah. Scroll down. Just to refresh this, you can see this is the table. If you wanted, you can go to the view source and check it out. Table tag we only created, ending also. Inside a table, for every form input field, automatically we are getting a row. This is the first name form input field. This is the second name form input field.
So come back. Instead of table or paragraph, <coughs> there is one more way. Something like a list of elements. For that purpose, go for as UL. Unordered list. Unordered list. Every form control will be going as a list. You can see. Just to refresh, this is the bullet symbol. These bullet symbols say it's like a unordered list. First name, its label, last name, and its text field. So very simple. You can you can display form controls. You can display form input fields in three different ways: paragraph, table, UL. The best one is table. Let me go for table. While going for as table, table starting tag and ending tag we only should provide. Table starting tag and ending tag we only should provide. This will be looking like a cleaner way. Refresh. You can see. So here, everybody, please remember. Go to the my view. There is a reg form class, which is a subclass to form. You can declare any number of form input fields, any number of form controls, form controls, form input fields. You can provide type of the form input field along with the label. Whatever you wanted, you can design complete form inside a class. Create an object to that class. A reference of that object. Supply to reg.html. How to supply? Through a dictionary. Object with a identifier as a form. This is not a predefined. It is our identifier. I can change this as a my form. Anything you can specify here. Same my form should be accessed in the reg.html. Go to the reg.html. In place of form, you have to use my form. My form dot as table. My form dot as p. My form dot as ul. As underscore table. As underscore ul. As underscore now check it out whether we can able to access this successfully or not. I refresh it. It's working perfectly. Now we are able to display we are able to display form content. There is the form. Let me define a form with action is equal to H8. Method is equal to post. Take the ending tag of the form. End of form. Please observe everybody. Form controls are displaying. Form controls are displaying in a table. All form controls we are keeping inside a form. We are keeping inside a form. To submit this form, we required one button. Input type is equal to submit. Value is equal to submit. That's all. Fully reg.html is done. The total reg.html is done. 
this is focusing sorry uh, this is targeting to h8 action is h8 let me copy action h8 go to the warrants let's go for path h8 let me go for my views dot hello 7 sorry hello 8 we need to develop this hello 8 hello 8 is not there let us see developing hello 8 inside a my views definition hello 8 with a request Now, once again, try developing our EG form here also. Then choose any identifier. But for the REG form constructor, you need to supply request dot post. Why? Because it is submitting through post. Through post, whatever first name and last name we are submitting, that will be copying into REG. That will be copying into REG. We can read from the REG. In order to read from the REG, definitely we need to start if block. REG dot is valid. To read the data from REG, if block is mandatory. To read the data from the REG, if block is mandatory, now you can print REG dot clean the data, clean the data. It is a dictionary supply name of the form control. Similarly, another one last name. From the form, we are submitting first name and last name. From the form, we are submitting first name and last name. I'm just reading. <coughs> then go for return. HTTP response. Supply. Submit is done. <coughs> here is valid is very important. How you got REG here? From a post. Request dot post. Inside a post, first name is one form control, that is one form into field. Last name is another form control, that is another form input field. After valid, then only cleaned data will be available. Without valid, cleaned data will not be available. There is a condition here also. You have to go for checking whether valid or not. Before reading cleaned data, cleaned data available only in the if block which is having a entry condition as is valid. Entry condition as is valid. That's all. Everything is done. Let me check. One small token is required if form submission is through method is equal to post. Let me copy that token. In the login to dot h there is a token. This token will be generating internally one hidden field. I will be clearly explaining about this token in the later sessions. Go to reg.html. Try providing this token. Inside a form body, 
anywhere you can provide. This will be generating one hidden field. What is hidden field and all? You can keep here also. In the farm body, anywhere we can keep CSRF token. Everything is done. Let us see. H7 with a submit. Let's go for EBC as a first name, XYZ as a last name. Click on submit. While submitting, we got a message like a submit is done. Check in the console. Hey, where is console? Little bottom. You can see we printed ABC and XYZ. First name printed, last name printed. This type of development is very simple. Lot of things internally automated. They just to provide it a process. We need to follow that process. Let us observe one thing. I am submitting without filling the form. First name is a required one. It is asking please fill the first name. You can see. Please fill this field. Let us fill first name. Last name doesn't require as it is an optional submit. Check in the browser. First name only, last name is a blank. Validations easily we can do in Django framework. Easily, very easily. This is a simple process of form development. In the last session, we developed a form in the raw way, almost in the raw way. Here, lot of automation we are getting, lot of automation. Designing one Python class, creating an object and using in the source view and target view. What is the source view? What is the target view? This is the source view where reg.html is written. Here we are using reg object and assigning to my form in the dictionary where it is considered as a context. This dictionary available inside reg.html. Inside reg.html, you can refer any member from the dictionary. That is my form. Then what is the destination? Hello 8. In the hello 8 also, we are creating reg form. This reference can be any name. Let's go for just F1. Use the same F1. Don't think like in both the places, reg itself. F1. That's all. Now let us check it out. Enter done. If you go to the terminal, you can see first thing, last thing. So please observe in the target defining our EG form by supplying request dot post. Inside request dot post, whatever data is there, that data assigning to attributes of our EG form that is assigning to F1. After validating, after validating, you can read the clean of the data. That is why this step is mandatory. This clean of the data is a dictionary. Supply the key. First name, whatever first name specified, same. Whatever last name specified, same. A simple registration form with a just a first name and last name. Try adding some more fields and experiment complete process. Hello 7 is assigned to H7 in the URLs. Hello 8 is assigned to H8 in the URLs. In the reg.html, action is H8. Method is post. This is the token. Then this is the 
farm development to submit the form. This will be generating all farm controls whichever defined in the REG class. It's a very simple farm development. Try practicing completely. We will see in the next session.